Because if you assume everybody who's asking for a budget or someone who can't afford your services are just not worth it, you could really exclude opportunities. Hi everybody, it's Alex. Welcome to God in Creatives. This is a community for freelancers, multi-passionate people, artists, sketchers, maybe you like to make puzzles. Whatever you do to use your brain and be creative, whatever that looks like for you, there's something for you here. And today we're going to talk about clientele. So when you're dealing with clients, and this can be just customers that are bargaining. But what I want to talk about today is the difference between cheap and budget work. We're going to differentiate the two. We're going to talk about why you should differentiate the two. And then we're going to talk about the warning signs, the red flags, and how to handle each. So although you can get kind of confused at what client you're dealing with, there is a huge difference between clients who want cheap work and clients who want budget work. People who are looking for cheap work are looking to take advantage of you or exploit you. People looking for budget work are people who have a budget and they're just looking for some kind of compromise. They're looking for someone who can work with their budget. This will look familiar if you've ever had a client push for high value at a low price or they've made it a ridiculous quote like here, take $5. Buyers with a budget are often more gentle and understanding and they know that there's gonna be some compromise and they don't expect a full delivery with their budget. The reason you want to learn to differentiate between the two is because you want to be able to stay away from cheap clients. Like, I'm not kidding. Don't even get involved. And budget clients, if your capacity allows, if it's a business brand organization person that you really want to work with, identifying that they are a budget client and it's something that you can work with, that can be very powerful. That's where I find the most fulfilling work. Here are some things to look out for. A cheap client will often talk to you in a condescending way or with urgency and just stress how they need this job done fast. They need it to be high value, but they need it to be done at a certain price. That's a red flag. Budget clients will talk to you very straightforward. They will tell you what they have and they expect you to set the expectations. They're waiting for you to say, this is what you can expect for this budget. Cheap clients often either come at you with a ridiculous, like here's five, ten dollars for five hundred dollars worth of work, or they don't have a budget. They're just trying to see how low you can go. While a budget client says, we have about this much to spend, what can I get for that? You know, a budget client is usually coming in understanding what they have. This is not always, and we'll talk about it, but usually they have at least a range. Cheap clients will often use disrespectful bargaining methods. They'll talk about, I can find someone to do it cheaper, or they'll promise you long-term work if you give it to them cheap. They'll use manipulation methods to try to get the cheap work from you. While budget clients, they often just tell you about their goals. They tell you about what they need and what they're looking for and why they think you're a good fit and why they wanna try to make their budget work. There's a very big difference and it's mostly in the tone and respect from the customer. So here's what you do when faced with either and if you're trying to figure out who they are. (laughs) Because it's not always clear. I'm making a pretty big versus statement but sometimes it's a little bit blurred because again, how people speak to you, the certain verbiage they use, things like that, especially when you're doing email or chat, you know, you have to think about language barriers, cultural differences, Predictive text, I just ran into that with a client. They were using predictive text and made them sound so mad at me. So although for me, it really stands out, you do have to be careful and try to really figure it out on your own. So first off, ask for a budget. If they're saying, I want this and I can't afford it, or they're just saying, I want this, whatever they say, ask for a budget. If the answer is, I don't have a budget or I'm not sure, have a service list ready. Have your services the prices and a breakdown of what they get, delivery timelines, etc. Have it all perfectly ready to just send them in a document so they can see their options. And this will also give them a taste of minimum and maximum price range. If they then say, this is a little bit out of my budget, I can't really afford this, but I really want to work with you, then you tell them to tell you a budget. Say, okay, well, what is your budget? Let's see if we can figure something out. And at this stage, you can just say no. Okay, I don't have the capacity for budget orders right now. You can say no. If you want to get into it a little bit more, then you keep going. If you ask for a budget and they still say they can't provide one and they're just trying to get you to like say how cheap you can go, let them know you won't be able to present them with options until you actually understand their budget. Tell them that they can take their time, figure it out, talk to a team, do the calculations and get back to you and then you can talk more. When they give you a budget, 
you have a few options that you can act alone on or you can put together. But basically, you offer a partial service, so a partial delivery. Maybe you can do the work, but you can't deliver in a fancy report. That's an option. If they want you to edit a video, maybe you can, you know, clean it up, make it look good, but you don't do these big effects or subtitles, things like that. Look for a partial delivery or just a smaller delivery that would fit their budget. You can also present an extended delivery time. Sometimes I do smaller budget orders if I have more time to work on them. I don't do this much anymore, but any discount I give, I do extend my delivery time. So even if it's just like a little bit of a discount, for example, I had somebody who asked me to do something for 25 USD cheaper to fit their budget, that's fine with me, but if I'm compromising, I want you to compromise as well. Instead of me doing this as I usually do, a few extra days would benefit me. So you give and you take, right? If you're at capacity or you're getting there or you have plans and it just isn't worth it to you to do this right now, you can say, listen, come back in a month. Things are going to be different. I'll have time to take you on at this budget. You can also offer a higher budget or a higher price that's still lower than your minimum. So if they're saying something that's just way too low, you can say, hi, listen, I understand that's your budget, but that is just way too low for what I have to do. Like even a partial delivery wouldn't be worth that. So if you can meet me here, I can do that for you. And that's an option. And of course, at any time, you could have simply said, no, I'm sorry, I'm not able to work with you with this budget. You don't have to explain yourself. You can just say that. You can give them your prices. That's it. That's all you can offer, right? What makes these clients so different is that cheap clients are often immature or they are knowingly taking advantage of you because they're not seeing your value and they're underestimating and undervaluing the return on investment that you are. And you have to remember that you are providing them value. It's not just a transactional item. They're going to take this item and use it. So you have to value yourself, and if they don't value you, you don't work with them. While budget clients are doing the best they can with what they have, I love to think that the worst someone can say is no, so you should at least try. You can't fault someone for trying. Sometimes you can reach a compromise, sometimes you don't want to reach a compromise, and sometimes you physically can't, and that's okay. They took a shot, you let them know, they move on, you move on. But you have to tread lightly. Because if you assume everybody who's asking for a budget or someone who can't afford your services are just not worth it, you could really exclude opportunities. Because money isn't everything, but the value of the work and the value of your work is a lot. So thank you for listening. If you heard lawnmowers in the background, I'm sorry. I live in an apartment building. But thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions that you want me to answer, I'd love to help. So, protect yourself from cheap clients, consider the budget ones, and stay creative. Bye.